Do School Better, a podcast for people who want to transform education. My name is Doris Corda. In this season, I discuss the core principles of my educational philosophy with Tim Desmond and Allison Tanker, my co-teachers from Hawkins School's Entrepreneurial Studies program. It's not about what you teach. It's about what they learn. In this episode, Allison reflects on her experience at the Hawkins School Educators Workshops, how she had to learn as much as possible for the fall semester, and how she is surviving as a teacher in training. Doris and Allison discuss why teaching this course requires dynamic and flexible lesson plans and how it is completely different than teaching specific content in a traditional classroom. You just uh, went through your first semester as a teacher in training, and there were two things that were completely and totally new to you. Um, one, teaching, and the other, this program, which is a very different kind of program. So what, t- talk about what that was like. That was, must have been kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was quite a transition. Uh, I, I remember being open to what we were about to dive into and putting a lot of trust in, in both you and Tim because I felt like I have no idea what any of this is about and I just trust that they feel like there's a space for me and that I fit in this crazy world and I remember I I, when I came on board it was uh, the summer prior to the the school year and right before the workshops that's right right before the workshops Uh, so even talking about that would be interesting sure Yeah, yeah your first impression we prepping that. I remember you, we were wrapping up the spring semester with the students and you were trying to prepare the workshops and I was like, hey, I want to be helpful. What can I do? How can mm-hmm. I help you out? And he said, oh, we've been trying to put this toolkit together. If you can try your hand at that. And I tried <laughs> and um, I brought all of my own background and whatnot that. into that and, uh, and, and found that actually wasn't quite useful yeah, because here yeah. I'm not at all involved in this yeah, program yet. Yeah, it was silly yet. of How, me to think you could be helpful, actually, and it's, right. Sure, but it was a good, yeah. it was actually, I remember feeling like I got a lot of deep insight initially from reading through yeah. the, the different elements of that and trying to piece them together, what the inner workings of this yeah. might have might have looked like. Well, then we went to the workshops, and uh, we first went out uh, to the East Coast, and I was sitting there listening and learning and initially I remember trying to feel more helpful I kept feeling like well I want to be helpful I want to you know insert myself I kept trying to figure out my place on the team and all of that and and I remember both you and Tim just kept pushing me pushing me back and saying hold on just wait just just absorb and take it all in and and observe right now that's what's most important that you learn and we went out to California I remember we were there for those workshops and I was in, really inspired by all of the other educators also who came out and the different schools they represented and the different programs they were interested in developing, whether it was for their science courses or uh, humanities or entrepreneurship. But it was, uh, it was eye-opening for me to see how applicable this was and how scalable, really, this model is that you developed. So... I was, I was buying in more and more on those early days, but I remember we came back from the workshops and, and you looked at me and you said, honestly, your only job right now is to learn. Mm-hmm. That is your job at this point, is to learn as much as you can about what we're doing here and what it means to be a teacher. And I felt like I could breathe then. I was like, okay, I don't have to prove myself yeah. in a lot of ways because I think I came off of the... Uh, work I was doing with my my business prior to this, where here I had been trying to sell to a number of high schools and colleges, different entrepreneurial workshops, and had to continually position myself as a relative expert in that space in order to be heard or even brought in. And that you opened the door and said, hey, we know you don't know about what it right. means to That's teach not inside why you're of some, on board. Right. You're not on board because you're an expert. Right. Yeah, exactly. So... It was, uh, then we were prepping for the actual fall semester, and we were out in the community working to get the entrepreneurs lined up for the real business problems that happen in the course. So here I was tagging along, being your shadow, to understand what it's like 
when you're out talking to these entrepreneurs and really vetting them to uh, decide using your decision filter, you know, yeah. this is which a are good the problems fit. we're going to use. Yeah. And in those early days, I remember saying, you know, Doris, there's actually some real patterns and systems to what you're doing. The, as you go out and sit down and have a routine with each of these entrepreneurs, it it's clear to me that you've yeah. really developed um, a number of systems and have a lot to share uh, that, that I can certainly learn from and work to replicate mm-hmm. going forward. I remember we were kind of typing those out and figuring out all the different uh, elements included. But from there, when we were ramping up for the class, I remember feeling like, gosh, I need to prepare for all these things. You know, I'm, I'm sure I need to read a bunch of things and I need to do a bunch of research and be ahead of the students because they're about to walk in and I have no idea yeah, you, what you I'm going to almost wanted teach to, them. You wanted to take, I remember you wanted to, uh, there was one conversation we had where you wanted to take, now that you'd said and listen to these businesses and their problems Mm -hmm. you wanted to solve them yourself right i was like okay so here i solve them first right (laughs) here's the path i would move through these are the yeah yeah. and that i was still really operating in my headspace of what i understood school to be right i was still trying to get over that barrier of well teachers are in the front of the room and you have, Clearly, to have taught, you have to have solved those math problems yourself first right, before, before you can before teach, you can teach them. them. Right. And as much of a believer in experiential learning and my own experience that I've had uh, in experiential entrepreneurship specifically, I still didn't quite understand how we were going to do it inside the classroom with because it was it was they were getting three credits for this class they were you know and what's well, completely different than it anything. was it's yeah. an academic course yeah, it's that, different than anything yeah so we the class begins and I remember feeling grateful that I was the teacher in training and again could really shadow through this whole semester that you were uh, really there to show how how you move through like the the day to day you know that was what was concerning for me i thought well what do we come in on the first day how do we introduce yeah. them to all of this and day 2 we have them doing the business model canvas mm-hmm. and day 3 they're going to meet the business all right i'm here i'm in for the ride but i remember day 2 they we had them present on the business model canvas and it, you know do an exercise with that and after the students left, I was like, wow, that was great. I thought that went pretty well. Here they didn't know much coming in the door. And I, I was impressed. They you know, moved through and learned a lot already. And I remember you said, are you kidding? Those kids left and were so upset with us. And I said, what? Are you kidding? What? I don't yeah, know. The whole de-schooling thing. You had no register. experience with, yeah. So here <laughs> I had really forgotten how fragile uh, students can be, especially, I mean, at, at a teenage age, where they are not used to getting real feedback. They are not used to they hearing... They got a lot of direct feedback that They day. sure yeah. did. <laughs> and it didn't even occur to me to, to hold back or to... In, to that couch. I should have held back or whatever because I didn't, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It would just seem obvious. Why yeah. wouldn't you say what you yeah, said yeah, to yeah. these kids and how positive that you said it because yeah. they're going to yeah. grow. Yeah. That was where I, my head was. And I remember you said, oh, some of those kids are... It's a total shock to their system. Yeah, totally out of their comfort zone mm-hmm. to be presenting on the second day in front of their peers, all this. <laughs> so as we're moving through, there's little elements coming up, you know, about assigning homework in that... You know, everything's now so technological, too. That was a shift for me mm-hmm. when, I, when I was in high school. People wrote homework on the board yeah. and that, you know, we're looking up articles as the students are doing their, their work during the day. And mm-hmm. we're like, gosh, well, they're really struggling with this in this very moment. Let's find a couple articles and videos relevant to that so that for their homework, we can assign that l- later tonight. And even the what you can, as, even that was something I had to, you know, you, you needed to learn over a long time, which article. So oh, you, yeah. don't, you don't look up the article that, remember, we've That's had multiple great conversations about that. It's not that simple. It's not, oh, they're one, they're struggling with this. So let's find an article that says yeah, that exactly. it actually can't. The you, word you use that I love is parallel learning. 
that you find articles that or really you find any kind of learning uh, element or reference that the students will digest and think through and then form their own bridge over to that's exactly the actual... right you want them to make the connection yeah. because then it is theirs they own it. they own it they get it that was so helpful that language for me because then i understood okay i'm not finding a an article directly relevant to you're not answering the, the, the you're not doing their problem for them yes you can't if you do that you the whole thing falls apart right right so these i mean all these little elements right i mean who who knew what i was getting into yeah. up front but learning all these different nuanced ways of uh, staying one step ahead that's right and and teaching in a way that truly is It's truly transformative that it's not the teacher in the front of the room standing there with all their expert knowledge, talking down to the students, saying X, Y, and Z, that it's helping the students really define their own learning journey where you're giving them the tools along the way. You're certainly... And by the way, you're working harder as a teacher in many cases than you would if you were just no kidding. Spinning. Like it's crazy what you have to do every day. I, I actually was pretty surprised about the. I, I have a number of friends who are teachers, and I know that you know on the weekend, on maybe Sunday, they'll sit down and do their lesson planning for the week. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Teachers work hard. Absolutely. No question about it. Yeah, after school weekends. Not saying this is harder than that. Sure, but this is. But it's yeah. different, is what yeah. it is, because we can't sit down on Sunday and sit down and plan a lesson for the whole week, because by Tuesday, one team who's solving a problem might be in a totally different place right. than another team, right. Right. and therefore we have right. to meet them where they are and prompt the learning that might be completely off where we thought we'd be by that point of the week. Right. So even if we had a bunch of things pulled or prompts or exercises or things we had hoped that we could get to, if you're really worried most, like you say, about what the students learn in that moment, then it becomes about their needs and not what you want right. to and teach And what them. you saw is we did actually, we do map ahead even a week's worth. For but, sure. But every single day we look at what we mapped out for that day and very often, most of the time, have to completely change it or move it to different places because of, of, of what you said, yeah. Um, your, the first time you sat through my giving feedback to the students after their first business problem. Mm -hmm. That's something that I've been told many times is very different than what students normally get. Mm. What was... That's a great point. How did that feel to you to see the, you know, when, when I Do the one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I remember thinking what a, what a gift it is for these students who don't have a lot of meaningful feedback uh, to sit with someone outside of their family, outside of their immediate world, right? This is um, a, a teacher who has their best interest at heart and is most interested in their growth and to have a real conversation one-to-one -one where you open up and have them reflect a bit about where they're at in their journey, what they're learning, what skills they're working on, and that you're very direct. You give them your honest feedback about where you see them in the process, so much so that they end up really craving that kind of feedback and acknowledgement about where they are, more so than, oh, you got an A on this assignment, or oh, we, we need to have nine points out of ten in order to feel right. like we've, we've mastered this. I think one of the things the first time that you sat through that, one of the things that was interesting to me again is because you haven't been a teacher in high school, um, you valued, you know, you appreciated the feedback, you appreciated what I was saying, you valued it, 
but once again, you we at the end of that, when I said, "Oh yes, so and so was very upset by what I just okay. said," you you you, okay. you 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 had no idea. Like you didn't understand that as a teacher giving them a grade mm-hmm. as seniors for a semester when they're applying to colleges that there's all kinds of other things going on um, be, underneath that conversation for those students that you just, you know, so the whole, the whole doing this in a high school where they're in an, you know, in a private school, great school progressive, they get a lot of great feedback from all kinds of teachers. They, they I mean, they're used to, but it, as all of them said, it's, radically different than anything they've experienced before this class and it's really really hard and those first few weeks are really tough for them very tough for them they're definitely out of their comfort zone and being asked to work in a much different way than they ever have they're they're wanting the recipe they're so badly wanting to please you know their instructors and they want to just give us whatever we want. And I remember a couple of students were like, but what do you want? You yeah. know, they were frustrated. What's the answer? What, yeah. Give well, me the answer. Yeah. And that we don't know the answer. The entrepreneur doesn't know the answer. That's why they're asking us to help them solve it, you yeah. know, and that for the students to understand, it was just a completely yeah. different approach to learning that they've, that they've had before. And, and really knowing, I mean, I still think I have a lot to learn in, in a lot of elements, but especially around understanding these students and where they are, because they look very adult. Yeah. They are very yeah. topically intelligent, right? Yeah. They've done a lot of, yeah. of reading and they're, they're well-informed and they can, they, they can stand there and speak well about a variety of topics, but they're still really young in their, their development and their growth. And to know that's part of the reason we're here, to help yeah. them on that journey. And that I have to continually be sensitive and mindful of where they are, but also not drop expectations. I know that's something really important, right? That we keep the expectations high for these students to really step up and, and push themselves in a new way where it's very intrinsically motivated to go out there and solve a problem, not because they're trying to get an A, but because they're trying to help uh, you know, someone in the real world solve a problem. And it's, ex- it's an exciting journey to be on. Yeah. It's been uh, a, a very uh, new experience for me working inside of a school, inside of an mm-hmm. institution like this. And... I appreciate how entrepreneurial we are as a team approaching kind of the build of this sort of a program that really is a startup in itself and uh, working to understand these different strategies that work well that you've been developing over all these years. And so one of the things, you, when you were in college and a couple years out, you spent time coaching uh, women who weren't entrepreneurs to begin with and coaching them on, you know, entrepreneurship and starting something. Um, And in education, we use a lot of these words now. You know, don't be the sage on the stage, be the guide on the side, be a coach, et cetera. But it's, those words don't really do this justice. And the kind of coaching you did Mm -hmm. and what this is are very different, Mm -hmm. very different. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw as I was leading you through this, um, that there are many things we do that don't come naturally. They're not obvious things, including where that line is when you have students who are given a real problem to solve with a deadline, mm-hmm. and they have a team, and it's up to them where they go. We have, you're right, we've developed all kinds of systems. So there's very, very much paths and guidance along through the process, and there are real elements to the process, but there are these lines around what we do or don't do that we've kind of established over years that you only know if you're, 
that you, you wouldn't naturally know. Right. So if, can you talk about your experience with being a coach in the moment, not being a coach sure. with that? Yeah, it's a great distinction because when you're in the space of, of, of a coach trying to really move people to the next step, the approach is, is more of a kind of like an advisor, right? Where you're sharing things with them, you're prompting them with different ideas, you're, you're joining their team in a lot of ways. Yeah. Sometimes you sit there as a part of the team and think, okay, how would we approach this if we were working together? Whereas the work to be done here in the classroom is, I mean, it's intentionally designed to be student, student-centered and student-driven, where to go into the room and sit there with their team and brainstorm a bunch of ideas is really not helpful. In fact, it's the opposite. It's exactly right <laughs> for them in their problem solving. And you, you, you always say to answer questions with questions. And something I've learned a lot this semester is how often I need to bite my lip, how mm-hmm. often I need to mm-hmm. sort of drop a bomb you know, ask a really tough question. Force yourself to walk away. And then close the door, walk out, and let them stew right. and have to work right. through those tough challenges right. on their own because right. that's where the learning happens. Right. And that it's um, it's still a new space for me to right. to be working in, but it's an exciting skill that I'm, I'm glad to be developing because I recognize how powerful it is <clears throat> to be able to ask good questions. I mean, broadly, to anyone in your life, but when you're specifically helping to develop another young person. Yeah, your your yeah, your job is to teach them methods, tools, techniques to guide the learning, to push the learning in directions, to keep those expectations <laughs> high, um, etc., but not to solve their problem. It's kind of like if you give a test to you're a stu- you know you're a teacher and you give a student a test and they uh, get help on the actual answers, yeah. It's and it's not intuitive how to do that. That's true. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this episode of Do School Better. We would love to hear from you, so please leave us a comment or a review. And if you're interested in learning more, check out Wildfire Education. That org.